In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I don't think technical certifications are worth it, and I'm gonna give you some pointers on what you should do if you're trying to become a designer, a hacker, a programmer, or a network engineer instead of trying to get your certifications. Before I decided to learn how to code and become a programmer, I was trying to figure out how I can get a job in IT working with computers. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I just knew that I wanted to get a job as soon as possible and start making money and then kind of figure it out from there. I had a few friends of mine that worked in different areas of IT and they recommended that I start off with my CompTIA certs. And this is something that many people will tell you to do. They'll tell you to get your CompTIA A+, Net+, Sec+, and then figure out where you want to go from there, whether you want to become an ethical hacker or if you want to get into networking, you're more than likely going to start off with those three certs. And getting certifications is a common thing that many people will tell newcomers to do in order for them to get some training and have something that they can put on their resume. If you're wondering what technical certs are, technical certifications are offered by different entities, organizations, and companies, and they are used to verify your knowledge in a particular set of skills, services, products, programming languages, systems, etc., etc., etc. Etc. And it seems like every company or software product nowadays offers technical certifications. There's Azure certs, there's Oracle certs, there's Cisco certs, there's the CompTIA certs that I mentioned, there's Adobe certifications. The list goes on and on. Basically, if a company is big enough and their product has enough usage, they're gonna offer a technical cert for that product. Even Google has jumped on the cert bandwagon and I've mentioned a few of them on my channel before. They have certs for digital marketing, SEO, and pretty much how to use all their Google products. And they've also recently come up with their career certifications. They offer career certs for IT support, UI, UX designers, project managers, and data analytics. Plus they also offer a Python cert for IT automation. As a newcomer and a beginner, many of the times you'll see a lot of these certs that are offered by these companies and you'll think that if you obtain these certifications, it'll be an easy way to get a job. And sometimes they're marketed in such a way. But the truth is that many of these certifications aren't really gonna be enough to get you that first job. And while they might show that you technically know something because you completed a course and now you have a certification that says that you know how to do this, the truth is that a lot of the times those certifications aren't gonna be enough to get you that first job. Many employers are gonna want you to have some real world experience and the certs are just kind of a nice to have. Some employers are gonna actually want you to have those certs in order for you to get a job whether or not you have enough experience to prove it. I've seen it many times before where particular jobs that I've been looking at will require you to obtain a certain certification just because it's a requirement from that employer. All that matters is that they want you to have it. And these certifications are created by these big companies in order to help employers and human resources figure out how to vet particular candidates. Because the truth is that a lot of human resources at big companies don't know what to look for in a candidate. So if they ask for a certification that says that you know how to do something, that's gonna help them filter out a lot of initial applicants. But in the long run, it doesn't actually mean that those applicants are gonna be proficient at their job, it just means that they studied enough to get these certs. And I think that's the biggest problem with these certifications. It just shows that you studied a test and you were able to pass it and get a piece of paper that says that you know how to do something. Many of the times you can use brain dumps in order to pass these tests. You can go online and find all the answers to the questions that you're gonna be asked, memorize them, go in, take your test and pass and get your certification. And those are some of the reasons why I don't think these certs are worth it and they may sound better than they actually are. Another issue with these certs are is that they're really expensive and they cost a lot of money and they're usually pass fail. So you go and you put up, you know, two, 300 bucks in order to get a certification and if you fail that test, you have to pay another two or 300 bucks or however much the cert costs to obtain until you pass. And it puts a lot of stress on you when you're studying for these certs because you know that if you fail, you're gonna have to go back, study more, and then pay for it again. And like I mentioned before, the biggest problem with technical certifications is that they don't guarantee you a job. Much of the stuff that you're gonna be asked in a technical interview is the hands-on stuff, the stuff that goes beyond certs, the stuff that you really only learn in the real world with real world experience. And that's where certs fail a lot of people. It might help get you in front of someone, but if you're just not technical enough and all you know is stuff that you've studied for certs, chances are that you're gonna struggle in that interview. You're wearing tuxedos to a job that requires you to clean bathrooms. We're done with this interview. Do we get any sort of souvenir? 
So I don't want to sit here all day and talk about why I don't think technical certifications are worth it. I want to give you something that you can take from this video and apply it to the areas that you might want to get into. I'm just going to kind of tell you right now what you should do if you want to be a designer, a programmer, an ethical hacker, or a network engineer that you can start doing right now that doesn't require you getting a cert and will probably help you more in the long run. So if you wanna be a UI UX designer, the first thing you're gonna to have to learn how to use is a design tool. There's many out there. Figure out which one you like to use. Figma is very popular right now, so you can start with that one. There's also a lot of other different design tools and wireframing tools and mocking tools that are used throughout the industry. You can look into, like I mentioned, Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch if you're on Mac. You also might wanna look at Envision, Basomic is for low fidelity wireframing. You can also look at UX pin, abstract, and just some of those tools in order to wireframe and mock up designs that you can then use for your portfolio. So that's gonna be the next thing. You're gonna want a portfolio. You're gonna wanna start putting things that you're building into that portfolio, things that you're designing. You should also create a Behance account so that you can show off some of your designs there. And I suggest maybe creating an Instagram and even a Twitter to kind of build up that as your portfolio as well. It's a good way to share your work and it's a good way to get yourself out there and have people see you. Once you've built a portfolio, you're gonna wanna try to get some work, have it be freelancing or if you can actually start applying for work, you're gonna have to prove that you can design stuff and you're gonna have to design fake websites and landing pages and different components for websites and product pages and different things that are gonna be expected from you as a designer and then you can start applying for work. And one thing that can really make you stand out as a UI UX designer, especially if you're getting into web development, is learn HTML and CSS. If you're a good designer who knows a little bit of HTML and CSS, it's gonna make you stand out from other applicants. You're gonna be dealing with a lot of front-end developers as a designer, and you're gonna be handing off designs, and there's gonna be a lot of communicating with front-end developers, and knowing a little bit of HTML and CSS will go a long way if you're a UI UX designer. If you're gonna to wanna to become a programmer or a software engineer, you're gonna to have to learn a programming language. If you're gonna be a web developer, you should start off with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript move on to a front-end framework, and then from there, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to implement CRUD functionality, understand how databases communicate with the backend and how the backend communicates with the front-end. You're also gonna to wanna to build a portfolio. You're gonna to wanna to have a portfolio website where you can showcase some of the things that you built, and you're gonna build as much stuff as you can and put it on that portfolio until you feel that you have enough stuff, and then you're gonna get out there and you're gonna start applying for jobs with the programming languages that you've been studying and building things in. But that's the gist of it and a high-level overview. If you want to go into more detail on some of the things that you're going to need to become a self-taught programmer. I talk about a lot of that stuff on my channel and there's plenty of other people out there that talk about this. So just do your own research on all the stuff that I'm talking about here because you should never get all your information from just one source and there's other people out there besides me that who have a lot of great information on these topics. The next thing, you're coming a network engineer. You're going to have to learn how routers and modems work. You're going to have to learn about IP addresses and subnet masking and how computers just communicate communicate with one another and basically how the internet was built and you're also going to have to know how computers work so if you're coming into this completely green and never working with computers at all in your life there's going to be a lot of stuff for you to have to do and learn so once you go and set out on that path and you've learned all the basics one of the things that you can build is a home server and, and then when you go and apply for jobs you can talk about that and it'll give you some real world experience at a small scale as a personal project. Another thing you can do after you've built a little home server and a rack at your house is go out and see who in your community might need you to hook up some routers and some modems for them. Go check out your churches and your boys and girls clubs and the small local businesses who might need help with that stuff because that is pretty much what you'll be doing. At a large scale, you'll be running wires through your server room into all the different offices and different routers throughout a building and it'll give you a little bit of real world experience that you can put on your resume or talk about at an interview. And then the last thing I wanna mention is if you wanna be a hacker, first thing I'm gonna say is don't do anything illegal, right? <laughs> be an ethical hacker and don't go out there and start trying to hack stuff. If you wanna become a hacker, you're gonna to have to learn a lot of different stuff. You're gonna to have to understand how computers work and communicate with each other. So you're gonna to have to learn a little bit of networking. You're gonna to have to learn different operating systems. You're gonna to have to learn a little bit of terminal. You're gonna to have to learn a little bit of programming because you'll need to know how to write scripts and run them 
on your machines and you're gonna have to just kind of learn a little bit of everything. I'm not a hacker. There's plenty of other people out there who know this stuff better than I do, but just as a general idea, you're gonna have to know a little bit about everything that has to do with computers. And you're probably gonna wanna focus on learning Linux and probably using Linux as an operating system. As far as projects and portfolios go, I don't really think hackers have that. And I don't really know how you would make yourself stand out as a hacker. I would probably recommend going and checking out some real hackers on YouTube or Googling it and kind of getting an idea there. I have a buddy of mine who's an ethical hacker and he makes really good money, but I don't know it well enough to talk about it. I can only speak as a programmer and as a designer because I mostly focus on front end development and I've done quite a bit of design work throughout my career. So I, I can give you good information on that. Hacking and network engineering is not my primary focus. So I, I don't wanna speak as an expert in those fields, but I know that there's plenty of information out there. And with network engineering, you might eventually need certifications, but I wouldn't focus too much on them right away. Do some research on your own. See if it's something that you're gonna like because you might go out and try to get certifications and you're gonna find out that you might not like it and then you're gonna be invested and you're gonna have spent a lot of time and money learning this stuff when you could just go spend the weekend on Google and on YouTube trying to figure out if networking is something that you actually wanna do. I just kinda of wanted to make a video talking about certifications and why I don't think they're worth it and give you guys a little information. All right. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you found any value in it, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you next time.